Hello, Dr. Paul, Dr. Simon Paul. I'm happy to uh, finally get a chance to interview you uh, because I read your book, The Real Mediterranean Diet, uh, and you have a unique perspective as a medical doctor. So on it, so first thing I want to ask you, and perhaps, perhaps before I say anything, perhaps you can just tell me a little bit about yourself, about your medical background and your profession. Sure. Well, thank you very much, Nathan. And first of all, thank you very much indeed for inviting me. And it's a privilege to, to join you today. And, and I've been looking at all the work you do, which is absolutely remarkable and, and, and splendid. So it's a real pleasure to, to join you today. So yes, as you say, my background is one of a medical doctor. I've been 30 years in, in, in practice, frontline clinical medicine. And my interest in the health of the Mediterranean diet, and in particular of extra virgin olive oil, and now in particular, in relation to the polyphenolic uh, mm. levels of, of extra virgin olive oil, it all began, I suppose, about 20 years ago. Right. Um, before the Mediterranean diet was uh, was perhaps as fashionable as it is now, mm. um, but of course, based on a lot of evidence that was accrued uh, really uh, since the seven country study, but into the 90s and, and, and into the 2000s, lots of evidence around the Mediterranean diet. I started to advocate it, advocate it for my patients, and I found patients anecdotally, of course, but patients coming back feeling so much better, uh, better numbers, better blood pressure, better cholesterol, uh, better weight, uh, and just feeling so tremendous on this fantastic diet. Um, and then I particularly became interested in what the drivers were for for, for the diet, because the Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet is so often described in just a few words uh, as vegetables, fruit, and nuts, and olive oil, and uh, and then people start to run out of ideas a little bit. Um, and, um, and and really, it, it, it uh, struck me very strongly that the uh, benefits of extra virgin olive oil can be measured by themselves scientifically, mm -hmm. that's first. Uh, and secondly, that it does seem to be very much down to the polyphenols in extra virgin olive oil. So I became particularly interested and now I'm very privileged to, uh, to travel and to consult and to lecture uh, around the Mediterranean diet, in particular extra virgin olive oil. Wow, that's amazing. That's, a, that's quite a turn of events. Because, you know, up until now, people have complained that doctors don't know about diet. And now we see uh, a lot of doctors getting into different diets, but mostly fat diets. This is the first book that I see, that I read, that has some very, you go into some very highly scientific stuff, uh, but you explain it in a, in a layman's way so everybody can understand it. Well, thank you. Yes, I mean, I think there are, there are certainly lots of fad diets out there. And, and as you say, a, a lot of people are promoting diets, which, uh, which really the, 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 they have very little scientific evidence behind yeah. them but also they are philosophically, I think, flawed. So that if you focus on single macronutrients, like a, 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 a low carbohydrate diet, right. uh, you know, what is that about? You know, we eat food, we don't eat carbohydrates, we eat food and, and mm. food contains many more ingredients, many more compounds than just carbohydrates. Mm. So for me, the macronutrient wars, as I describe, whether it's paleo, whether it's high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, you know, is all a distraction. Uh, and, and, and so it's, it's a real pleasure to uh, actually be an ambassador for a diet which is founded on foods, uh, founded on uh, a lot of uh, evidence, uh, and to be able to, to advocate it, but also to be able to explain it. And my role as a frontline physician is, is precisely that. So my, my, my job as a, as a frontline clinician is to explain potentially complicated medical concepts uh, to patients to help them understand how better to to manage their health. So, mm -hmm. so that's my background. So, uh, so when I can see some of the quite nuanced and complicating, complicated, but at the same time fascinating science of the Mediterranean diet, it's a real pleasure to be able to try and explain that uh, in everyday language, so that people can uh, understand why the science is so relevant and why the science is so exciting. Right. Now, because I also, let's get back to fat diets, because this is something I'm, I'd like to have your opinion on, because I've been reading about the Pritigan diet and them saying a lot of bad things about olive oil. And then I read the studies that they based it on. And apparently if an olive oil um, constricts the, the arteries, but then I read, that's what the Pritigan diet uh, you know, fans talk about. But then I read another study that mixed olive oil and wine. 
And they found that actually the it relaxes the endothelial cells and keeps them elastic for two hours after consumption, all of them one together. So what the, what the hypothesis is that the olive oil without the polyphenols may not be as healthy as the one with polyphenols. That means that you can have an olive oil that's not extra virgin even, but as long as you have polyphenols with it, like from wine or from fruit, vegetables and so forth, it could be very low polyphenol, but you still get the benefit of the olive oil. Is this true? So I think I think a simple answer is is yes. I think there's a there's, there's absolutely a truth in, in what you say, and I think what it boils down to is, is a couple of things really, a couple of things about the way in which we view diets and the way in which we view science. Right. So the first thing is that it's really easy to measure certain things in a test tube or to isolate particular ingredients and try to try to prove one thing or another. But the reality is that um, not only do we not eat macronutrients, we eat food. Right. But it's not even as simple as that. We don't just eat food, we eat meals. So when we eat food, it's usually combined, hopefully deliciously, with mm. other foods. And it, it would be crazy to imagine that these foods don't interact. And indeed, that they don't interact with our gut microbiome and that we don't process them in, in, in a quite compl complicated way. So I think you're absolutely right. We have to look at whole diets. We have to look at... Um, not just ingredients, but we have to look at what compounds are in those ingredients um, and how they interact and interface with, with compounds in, in, in other ingredients. So you're, you're um, I, I know, uh, uh, referencing a study which was fascinating, which showed that consuming an olive oil rich meal with some red wine uh, not only enhanced the what we call the bioavailability that's the the, the availability to our bodies of the uh, potentially beneficial polyphenols um, but it also in fact actually created new polyphenols that weren't in the individual ingredients um, and that's also true uh, when one cooks with extra virgin olive oil you get a mix between vegetable polyphenols uh, uh, and uh, uh, and, the, and the extra virgin olive oil it, it changes the bioavailability um, and you can see benefits uh, uh, from from those kind of combinations and the mediterranean diet is i mean it's actually not even just a diet it's a lifestyle um, but the mediterranean lifestyle is all about how you put foods together in a really healthy way enjoy consuming them and and what we're what we're what we're seeing in that is that those combinations of of, of diet so um so i think you know the prick and pretty can um diet uh, um, um, uh, it is promoted on the basis of this kind of assertion about olive oil uh, in, in complete isolation for which there is not very much uh, scientific evidence to support anyway but it's all uh, rather isolationist in the same way that the macronutrient uh, um, um, you, you know pugilists uh, uh, fight each other over whether fat is good or carbohydrates are bad or, or vice versa. Um, and so I think that's very limiting. Uh, and we need to look at uh, things like polyphenols and the way they work together uh, in ingredients um, mixed and potentially cooked together. Right. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the, what I get from it. And that's what uh, excites me about uh, living here in Greece, because you have such a variety and such a simple and simple meals. Like I see here, and I've gone to some villages and down in the Peloponnese, and what they do is they gather the all the um, all the um, greens in the winter, and then they they braid them, and they hang them to dry, in a dark room, and they have greens all 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 for the whole year. Yes, and, and they probably preserve it, and, and yes. you know, and, and, as well in 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 olive oil, in extra virgin yes. olive oil. Yeah, they make pies with it. They make everything with it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and when I know that um, uh, Professor uh, Antonia Trocopoulou based in, in Athens and her oh, yeah. team, her team spent a long time looking at the components of those of those wild greens. And, and really, they contain some fascinating uh, um, uh, compounds, you know, some omega threes, and also some very unique and individual polyphenols, just in the same way that extra virgin olive oil contains very unique, uh, um, uh, and interesting polyphenols. Um, and, um, and so wild greens, you know that you're describing as part of a part of life and also of course this is why we come back to the lifestyle because the, the climbing up the hill right to, 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 to harvest your 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 and to find your wild greens and to forage right. for them and the exercise and and and, and the you know under 
under the you know the the, the fading the fading setting sun or at, at, at dawn uh, you know just as the sun rises because it's too hot later on in the in the day all right. of that is part of the experience and, and and the lifestyle that is contributes I'm sure to health in some difficult to measure way but uh, but but it feel that feels very very uh, real somehow doesn't it yes foraging that's uh, one of my uh, fondest memories in childhood is going with my grandmother up the mountain, up the hills, and gathering the chamomile, getting big bags of it, bringing it home, drying it out in the backyard uh, on the cement, on a on a on a um, on a sheet of uh, on a sheet, and then uh, making having tea all year. Yes, Just like that. yes, from the dried from the dried chamomile. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. And and um, there's a there, there is Greek mountain tea, isn't there? Which I yes, think is, oh, it's is, amazing. Is, is sideratis, which again, I think there's some research going on in, in universities in Greece to identify some of the particularly unique uh, unique compounds uh, in that. So, so yeah, and, and it's, that's part of the lifestyle and part of the upbringing. And I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, uh, well, you're talking about life in Greece, and well, if only I could retire to Greece and 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 sit by my by my swimming pool and all my stresses were to go that's away that's my advice people i tell them sell everything come to greece that's it well yes, <laughs> yes but i have to i i have to counter that Ethan, because that's a that's a that's a highly prejudiced a place to be but, but seriously there I'm are, a there promoter are, there, okay i'm a promoter of course seriously there's some very real issues around 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 the environment and yeah, around yeah. how one chooses to 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 um to, to live one's life i think here those of us rather stuck in the uh uh, in, 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 in countries which are perhaps uh, not quite as aspirational as, as Greece. I think the answer is to, to, to try to apply to our lives as much of the, the Mediterranean lifestyle as yes. we can. So, you know, on an autumn's day, uh, you know, go out and pick some blackberries um, right. and, uh, and, 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 and people are uh, foraging, people are uh, looking more for, for, for what I suppose we loosely call real food or local right. That's hard to define, but people try and go to go to farmers markets. They try and, uh, I think, increasingly look for foods which represent quality. Mm -hmm. um, um, and 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 I know that because foods are often grown so naturally in the Mediterranean, that quality literally falls off the trees or falls off the bush or or or, or, or just appears in the ground naturally because mm. it's it's unprocessed and uh, and and the way in which foods are are, are grown is often much more much more true to, true to nature. But people again are, are looking for that. I think a little bit more in the West to try and find foods that are of high quality that really smell good and that really taste good. Um, and, and it's fascinating that we know that polyphenols, for example, which are which are very powerful bioactive compounds, we know that they contribute to taste and smell, mm. which yes. is again really exciting because I think the quality of food that you're describing, finding naturally on a mountainside, uh, is something that I think we need to try to reproduce here uh, in, 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 in Northwest Europe um, and, and the US, uh, where we're more used to having foods that are, that are perhaps um, grown in ways that are slightly more intensive. Yes. Well, you know, there's I have an interesting story about that. I was in a, in a trade show in Salonika and an olive grower came up to me and says, listen, you guys, stop pushing the polyphenols going so high. You're going, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. You can't drink that olive oil. It's, it's, it's impossible. So I turned to him and I said, well, actually, I don't sell it as olive oil. He says, what? Oh, I sell it as hot sauce. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you put it on hot sauce. You know, anywhere, steak, you put it on your potatoes, you put it anywhere, you know, it's hot sauce because uh, it's peppery to the throat and very bitter. And uh, so then when I went home, I, uh, I researched it because I was joking, of course, I'm pulling his leg. Um, then uh, sales of hot sauce in the U US and sales of uh, olive oil. Hot sauce is equal to olive oil in total sales. How and, interesting. And, and then they say that Americans have, you know, like mild foods. Yes, and it, and it is. It does depend on what you're used to, and of course, yes. there's a fa there's a famous study which came out of the states which showed that actually people in the U.S. prefer rancid olive oil because that's the flavor yes. that they're they used know. to. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I often, you know, I, I sometimes um, I'm not an olive oil sommelier, but I sometimes do do uh, tasting uh, with audiences uh, of olive oil, uh, and I say, you know, it's we, we've got to kind of try to understand olive oil particularly mixed with food but we've got to try and recognize this bitterness and the and the pepperiness that you're yes. describing as being a positive feature right. 
um, and, and then and then people sort of, sort of slightly are surprised by this. And, and, and I say, well, you know, you're, we're talking about bitterness and we're talking about spiciness. Um, and it, it's a it's you know it's a Friday it's a Friday afternoon and and you know what are your plans where, where you know where are you going to go to eat tonight and you know somebody in the audience might say well I'm going to go uh, and have a pint of bitter and then I'm going to go to the Spice Palace for an Indian curry <laughs> and I say well so you're telling me that you're finding bitterness and spiciness challenging well you no it's okay you know you 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 actually there are circumstances where you where you enjoy yeah. that bitterness and, and the pungency. Yeah. And the spiciness, and so actually, it's about helping people to understand uh, about the, the the benefits of that. And of course, you know, Cajun spices in the states yes. ultimately ultimately derive uh, from from France, in fact, mm. because the, the Cajun populations came, I think, down to uh, Louisiana and places like that in the states. From, right, from Arcadia, from uh, from Canada, actually, yeah. From Canada, and originally their ancestors had come a few generations before. I understand from France. Right. So Cajun is actually um, almost a Mediterranean uh, um, 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 uh, idea uh, that that's brought to the states. Um, so so yes, I think it's about helping and understanding people to recognize these uh, these different flavors as being really positive attributes. And you know you know the Mediterranean diet and one of the aspects of my book is looking at the history of the Mediterranean diet because of course it was described in modern terms in 1960, the 1960s and in medical terms but actually the Mediterranean diet of course is a diet of, of millennia and of course the, 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 the wonderful stories that go back about the Mediterranean being a real melting pot on the spice route mm. you know so we see the history of of food evolution yeah. as, as, as cultures based around uh, olive oil uh, as a fundamental source of, of, of nutrition, a fundamental source of fat, a fundamental cooking oil, introducing spices from, uh, from other parts of the world, introducing mm. garlic from, 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 from Asia, from India, um, introducing spices along the spice route from the Far East and so on, all to bring to, uh, to, that, to that Mediterranean diet as it's evolved over the years. And bringing with it, of course, really powerful antioxidant compounds because um, gram for gram um, uh, spices are very very rich things yes. like cinnamon cinnamon uh, uh, and other spices are, are very rich in in, in polyphenolic uh, um, antioxidants yeah for sure I mean it's part of a healthy diet it's practically they're practically medicinal in nature uh, and you know did you know that about the this melting pot of of uh, the spice roots and so forth in, in BC. Uh, you know, in Sicily, in 625 BC, they had cooking contests. And they actually- no, I, did, I didn't know that, that's fascinating. And they, gave, and they gave, the winner of uh, the contest, they was given an exclusive right to, to make that dish for one full year. It was the first instance of a, of a patent. So, that that, is so the chef wonderful. was given the right to, the only one who could make that meal, that means that during the whole year, if anybody had a banquet and so forth, they would invite this chef to make his meal and then he would benefit from it. So it's the first instance of, a, of a authority giving the right, exclusive right to, um, to, uh, to intellectual property. That's absolutely fascinating. One of these things, one of the one of the things I love about these kind of conversations is that I always learn so much. Yes. And, 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 and you know, I, I reflect on the fact that we often think that we are, you know, we're so advanced in yeah. you know in the uh, in, in in the 21st century, um, and that somehow uh, um, these 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 civilizations were so primitive. And 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 the example that you that you've shown is that actually you know they they were thinking about these things all the time. And yes. and, and actually I I kind of uh, look at the 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 this this guy uh, Apicius, uh, who was a who was a Roman uh, chef mm -hmm. uh, who wrote. Uh, wrote effectively recipe books and and by the sounds of uh, of descriptions of him at the time he was he was a real diva he was a real problematical character and so he was a kind of he was he was a celebrity chef um right. as we as we know many of them right. today right. Right. Um, <laughs> um, um, you know, slightly difficult to handle at times and and and, and, and so on. and you know, so we kind of think oh well you know celebrity chefs are a, are a modern invention well right. Well, certainly not, you know, yeah. uh, they were around in those times. Uh, and, and, you know, we can reflect on so much in history, can't we, with these stories, you know, with Pliny the Elder described 
uh, the various grades of olive oil mm, yeah. way before the International Olive Council ever, <laughs> ever existed. You know, he described, I mean, Pliny the Elder described based on his being perhaps being a governor, we think in Tunisia, right. growing olive. And he, he described um, in, in his natural history book around the grades, the bitterest, purest olive oil to be first yeah. harvested and then the later oils with lower uh, um, lower value for, uh, for 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 health um, and and how to how to how to do those early harvests. So you know we think we are you know we think that we 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 we're, we're modern and we we know all these things, but actually if we look back in history, a lot of it has been uh, very much covered before us. Yeah, because back then they were doing trial and error, and the and the whole the whole subject was wide open. I mean, yes. they, they were looking at mushrooms. They didn't know what kind of mushroom there was. So they had to test it, you know. Uh, so some people got sick they, and some others didn't. Some of that felt much better. So with foods, they were very observant because they had to know what the result was. So yes. if you had this meal, if you ate this diet. So even when they traveled, they would look at the people's bodies and say, what, what do they eat? And what do they look like? What's their muscle development? Uh, how strong are they? Do they yes. have stamina and so forth and so on. So that's the most fascinating part. And as far as the patent is concerned, I found it by accident. I was looking at patenting and Wikipedia patents. And that's where it comes up. This recipe it was the first instance of a patent. <laughs> fascinating, isn't it? That is, yes, that is extraordinary. So, I know. We think, uh, you know, anyway, I could go on about that. But um, more specifically now, so uh, in relation to um, olive oil now, which is my... You know, passion, my craziness, uh, because I got into it when I, when the the first health claim for polyphenols came about for food. I believe it's the only instance that polyphenols were given a health claim as part of a food uh, with olive oil. That's the first in 2012. Yes, and, that's my understanding too. And yes. that and that really got in, in got me interested uh, in the beginning for trade because I thought, okay, now we know. Uh, which olive oils have the most oleacanthal, so then I can go market those olive oils as high in oleacanthal. But, you know, then I got involved in a whole debate of how to measure them, <laughs> what method, and I was a writer at the time, uh, publishing articles for oliveoiltimes.com, and uh, then I got involved, sidetracked into the research and development and, and trying, to, trying, to, trying, to, uh, trying to clarify this health claim because it wasn't the most clear. <laughs> it was written by epidemiologists. It wasn't written by, written by analytical chemists. So the language was a little obscure, although anybody who knows can certainly know what they're talking about, but it's easy for somebody to say, oh no, it doesn't mean this, it means this, and create a lot of confusion and, and, and problems. Uh, because it is a problem, as I found out, as we found over the last 10 years, that olive oil, you know, early harvest olive oil needs to be protected. You know, temperature control is very, very important. And um, it's something that's not mentioned. It may say keep in a dry, cool place. What does that mean? 18, 20, 25 degrees? Some, for somebody living in Egypt, maybe 25 degrees is very cool. Uh, yes, you're exactly right. I mean, I think it illustrates, doesn't it, the fact that this health claim, uh, which um, for listeners who, who might not be aware, basically you are allowed with a specific uh, certain level of uh, uh, specific polyphenol compounds, which are antioxidant compounds, you're allowed to make a claim, but you have to adhere to specific wording, which describes the benefit of the extra virgin olive oil in reducing the oxidative stress on LDL cholesterol. Yeah. Um, and the problem for most consumers is that they have no clue what, <laughs> what does that mean? means, of course. <laughs> um, and, 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 and what you've also um, alluded to is the fact that actually, you know, what, what measurements are these based on? And is this uh, at harvest? Is this three months after? Is this six months after? Mm -hmm. As those polyphenols potentially are, are dropping in, in level. I think, though, um, what, what is clear is that oxidative stress on LDL cholesterol is absolutely a contributing factor to heart disease. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think, you, you know, it, it is a, it is a easy, uh, it is an easy step to say that health claim describes 
it doesn't describe just a, just a, an abstract effect on LDL cholesterol because it wouldn't be a health claim if it was simply describing an right. abstract abstract effect. It must have some consequence on health, otherwise yes. it wouldn't be a health claim. Yes. So what is the what is the effect on health? Well, it's reducing uh, um, inflammation of, of cholesterol plaques, um, and therefore it's reducing ultimately your risk of, of, of mm. heart disease. Um, but the wording on, on the claim uh, is obscure to consumers. There is some, um, um, I think, uh, possibility of, of having some hope around that because um, there are some flexibility allowances within EFSA guidance to allow you to try and communicate a health claim in a way that is more um, 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 more overt but yeah. nobody has quite nobody has quite uh, negotiated um, um, on a product in store uh, with their local authorities about how to express that right. flexibility that is allowed within the guidance to ensure that consumers can understand. But at the moment, it, it seems to me to be a great loss because, because here's a health claim that um, people are beginning to use on label, mm. but consumers don't understand. Yeah. So actually, consumers are missing out on the potential for having a high polyphenolic extra virgin olive oil to benefit their health um, and let's face it, EFSA's job in producing health claims ought to be firstly to limit unevidenced claims, right? but secondly, when they do allow a claim, it actually ought to be to ensure consumers can actually benefit from that yes, claim. Yes, yes. And so um, I, I think that uh, those of us who, who, who have a little bit of understanding about what that means in terms of health, actually, I think we have a role to, to, to try to help understanding about, uh, about what the effect is of, yeah. of, of polyphenols. And another interesting, interesting aspect is that oxidative stress on uh, LDL cholesterol is part of the claim. Um, but EFSA have been very unhappy about the using the words antioxidant, mm -hmm. because antioxidants have been used by uh, often by supplement producers yes, yes. Uh, who have to adhere to different yes. legal frameworks. Mm. It's often used and has, I think, been previously used by uh, by food, but in the food industry, in an extremely loose way, right. um, which hasn't helped. But yet, at the same time, the effects of the polyphenols are not only anti-inflammatory, but there clearly is an antioxidant effect because mm. the, because. Reducing the oxidative stress on LDL cholesterol in anybody's head must be antioxidant. And yet, and yet, one is not allowed to say that high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil has an antioxidant effect on label. Leave it to so, the bureaucrats. Leave it to the you're bureaucrats. Right. So, 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 so it, it's, it's a strange world we find ourselves in. And I suppose, although we have this health claim, I suppose what a lot of us are really, really interested in is is explaining to 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 consumers and the public that if we have polyphenols um, and not just hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol, which are the two named polyphenols in this particular health claim, um, which was incidentally based on one or two particular pieces of research from from Maria Covas in in, in Spain. But what we need to explain is the fact that it's overall levels of polyphenols, that there are different polyphenols, yes. that there's a polyacanthal, yes. that they have anti-inflammatory effects as well as having uh, effects on reducing oxidative stress on LDL mm -hmm. cholesterol. Mm -hmm. They actually have more widespread anti-inflammatory effects and try to help people understand that this affects the taste uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the experience around right. the extra virgin olive oil and how to look after oil to preserve it, as you so rightly said. Yeah, and that's what I like about your book, uh, Simon, that you identify that the way you uh, combine these foods also increase the polyphenol absorption. Like, for example, like you mentioned earlier, just to remind people is that with the, when you combine olive oil and wine, it, studies have shown that it may increase the polyphenol absorption up to double, twice as much if they were on their own. Uh, from The polyphenols from the wine and from the olive oil as well. So yes. perhaps you don't even need the minimum amount of 250 milligrams per kilogram that's in the health claim, maybe only 125. If you have it with wine, it doubles them, so you get to 250. <laughs> exactly, yes. And all these things are really up for debate. And I think it's really important yeah. that, um, that, 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 we acknowledge that we acknowledge that there are areas of uncertainty. I right. think it's really important that we that we, and, and, and I, 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 I want to be faithful to this in my book, which is to say, 
there are certain things we understand. You know, there are the known knowns. Yeah. But there are also the unknown knowns. Yes. And then the unknown unknowns. Yeah, because, know, know. Be, 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 because actually, you know, and we have to respect the science that, that these polyphenols, they are slightly mysterious. Um, you know, we, 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 we consume them in our foods and they're yeah. variable in our foods and the way we combine them with our foods changes them. Then our gut microbiome changes them as well. And then they get absorbed. We actually find it, I mean, scientists find it really difficult to see their, how they act mm. in, in terms. And there's even some, some theories that perhaps antioxidants combining together, polyphenols recharge themselves actually in our, in, at a cellular level in terms of their antioxidant capacity. So, so there's a lot that's really, really sort of sort of highbrow science and a lot that we don't understand. Um, and then, and some polyphenols completely mysteriously disappear um, after they've hit our gut microbiomes and then they reappear in our urine, but try as we might to measure them in our cells or in our blood, we can't. But at the same time, I think even though we, we know that our level of understanding is, is, is fairly primitive and that, that we've got a lot to learn, I think it's so important that we say, okay, but we do know that there are certain really fundamental uh, things going on with polyphenols yes. which benefit health. So when I speak to some of these scientists for whom I have the most, you know, utmost respect, they will say, well, you know, we can't say this, we can't say that because we're not certain, we don't have the evidence. Yes. Um, and, and, and I attend conferences about bioactives and about polyphenols I'm, I'm attending one in Palma in, in, in June and, and you know scientists get together and they often argue with each other about the minutiae of their you know of the of, of their of the of their scientific technique and their methodology and 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 and, and often there's a slightly competitive edge and so so they're kind of looking at their science their science with extraordinary uh, sometimes self-effacing and sometimes actually in a combative way of other scientists mm -hmm. trying to kind of reduce their work down and, 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 and perhaps potentially diminish their work. And actually what we should be saying is, look, we know this, and this is really potentially important. This is really potentially positive. And, and, and it's pretty obvious, isn't it? That, you know, so, yeah, so we, we, know, we know the Mediterranean diet is healthy for us. We know that extra virgin olive oil has always been a fundamental part of that. Well, although actually maybe not extra virgin olive oil because maybe a lot of the oil that was consumed uh, in previous generations wasn't necessarily as, 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 as high grade extra yeah. virgin as, yes. as, it, as, it is, as it is now. But perhaps that's because it was, you know, the com combination of foods as you've described. Right. Yeah. But we also know that polyphenols are really important in that context. We know that polyphenols have some uh, bioactive, uh, you know, some bioactivity, which is really, really important for health. So let's get that message across um, and, and then try, you know, and then look for papers that, 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 that help us to understand the mechanisms. Right, because, you know, I don't know if you saw the latest uh, research that uh, Dr. Magiatis and uh, Dr. Lenny Melio and Amal Kadumi, I believe in the States, where they discovered what happens in the body. The lacantal actually changes into something else. And then when it goes to the brain, it changes into something else because it yes. interacts with the amino acids, which yes. is fascinating. It's like it, it, it is. And that cutting edge research is so important to help us to understand what's happening um, mm. on a physiological and a cellular cellular level. Um, and so I think, you know, there's the, the, there's 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 very exciting science going on around this. But at the same time, we also need to get these messages out in a very, very understandable uh, a, a, and comprehensible way uh, to 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 the general public. <laughs> I think this. I think this is the way to do it. I think this is backwards of the real Mediterranean diet, a practical guide to understanding and achieving the healthiest diet in the world by Dr. Simon Paul. Really, I what you did in this book is exactly everything you're, dis you're discussing right now, and for me, it's very valuable because it brings to focus the combination that you can get polyphenols from very different sources, not just one. You can't just get buy the highest polyphenol olive oil and have that and then go out and have french fries and, and burgers and fast food and think that's, that's your medicine or that's gonna do something positive. Uh, it may, but there's some other, getting it from a wide variety of sources, not only you get more of them, but also they interact with each other in ways that makes them more beneficial. 
I think that's exactly right. And if we can get over these, 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 these debates about carbs and proteins, then we can actually talk about food. And then we can talk about these really interesting concepts of the polyphenols, these bioactive compounds. So, you know, the Mediterranean diet has got the right combination of carbohydrates, low GI whole grain carbs. It's got great proteins often from, from fish or, or even plant proteins from beans. It's got, um, you know, it's got really healthy fats, great sources of vitamins, minerals, because the soil is, is often really healthy soil in, 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 in med traditional Mediterranean countries. So great vitamins, minerals, um, 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 but then we also nail it down to these bioactive compounds, right. the carotenoids the, 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 and the polyphenols and, and the, the potential for antioxidant effects. And I think that's why for me, the Mediterranean diet is such a great thing great uh, way to eat and a great topic to discuss because it doesn't just limit our, our our nutritional discussion we can discuss all of these actually much more exciting so-called minor uh, uh, compounds but actually these these compounds that that have a real effect uh, not only on pleasure in terms of what we eat because actually they, they have different taste sensations uh, but also in terms of their 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 bioactivity mm. and their and their potential to to to, to be beneficial to health Exactly, exactly. I want to ask you, are you coming this summer to the Olympia Health Awards in Athens, May 15th? So I am, what date is it again? May 15th, May, May 15th. 15th. I think I'm probably not going to get there this ah. summer, but I would, I'd love to. And I know I have very fond memories of coming to the old parliament in, in, yes. in pre-pandemic, which was a wonderful experience. Yes. Not least because, you know, you, you bring the producers. Yes. And, you know, so we've talked, we talk um, about communicating to the public, mm -hmm. um, you know, and when we talk about public communicating the consumers, but the, but the great things that, you, that you're doing in that context is also having this dialogue and this debate with, with the producers. And the producers are, 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 are really smart people and really now are beginning to understand how they can use yes. uh, understanding of, of polyphenols okay. to nurture their products and, and to make really, really high quality, really, really yeah. healthy. So it's wonderful to see those interactions with, 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 with farmers, you know, who, who, and producers who come to those awards um, and, 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 you know, you can engage and discuss with them. So, so part of my, uh, the way the people I talk to, you know, I, I, I talk to consumers and, and, and hopefully communicate through my, through my book, but I also spend a lot of my time talking to food manufacturers, but also to producers mm. and, and, and often having these discussions about how they're producing the olive oil. Um, and, 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 and I might in some instances contribute, I hope to, to them producing better extra virgin olive oil, but mm. I always learn much more from them uh, when they're telling me about how, you know, what they're what's happening in their grove uh, and, and how they're managing that. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and so, so again, it's important to have these discussions the whole way through from, from literally from, from farm to fork or, or it, in this case, from soil to spoon. Yes. Yes. It's actually having those conversations. Yeah, exactly. Cause I, I asked you because on, uh, on the 14th, the day before we're having the Aristotle awards here on Aegean Island. So we're having a feast of ancient Hellenic recipes oh. uh, and also uh, ancient Hellenic instruments being playing modern and ancient songs. And then we'll have also the awards. It'll be How a huge wonderful. party. How wonderful. Well, as I, as I can't make it, I hope you, I hope you take some videos and I hope oh, you yes, for sure. Oh yes. On your site. And so that we can all enjoy those. Uh, well documented. At least remote, at least from, from afar. Yes, because last time we did it in, on the, in 19, 2019, and uh, it was an impromptu dance that happened. Somebody put music on in the restaurant. All the, 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 it was the uh, scientists with the, the producers, olive oil producers, and the other producers there uh, making the, uh, uh, the uh, different grains, ancient Greek grains, and chefs, they all start dancing. It was a beautiful uh -oh. thing to see. It was I, just I'm wonderful. Having I'm, I'm having the image in my mind at the moment. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think of the video. I have the video of that. I, I, would love, I would love that. And I would love to see your dancing as well, Nathan. Yes. Well, I did. I may, may do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> in 2019, I did, I did get up for it.
<laughs> I, I expect that was something very magical to watch. I think. Yes, and Dan Flynn took that amazing photograph when I was in the air. I looked like I looked like a dancer, you know. I looked like a <laughs> fantastic a moment in time. Yes, that was fantastic. Anyway, it's been a pleasure to see, um, talking to you, Simon. And it's um, and uh, I'm going to talk about this book a lot. And I wish you all the success. And um, I think this is really it. I think you've really hit hit uh, hit the nail on the head, as they say, with the with the Mediterranean diet, especially the part where you don't eat big portions, small portions. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, well. Thank you, and it's been a real privilege to to talk to you, and 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 thank you for everything you're doing, and thank you for your support. And uh, you know, I think I think whenever I talk to people interested um, in in the Mediterranean diet and passionate about about extra virgin olive oil, you know. We're all working to, to, to as ambassadors to really spread the word to, yes. to get what we understand and know intuitively to be about having a happy and healthy uh, um, um, and hopefully long and enjoyable life. You, you know, we, we're all wanting that uh, to get that message out and impart mm. that in a way that uh, in way that that helps others. I think. Yes. Well, you're a big part of it, especially being a doctor and somebody who uh, took a keen interest in diet as part of the. Uh, doctor's uh, advice to his patients and uh, that's really that's really cool thank you lovely to talk okay take care thank you you too bye